In this example, it looks like we have a couple of square matrices that are going to be equivalent matrices. Each of these matrices has two rows and two columns, so the dimensions are two by two, two by two, okay? Well, since we're saying they're equal to one another, what we know about equivalent matrices is that all of their corresponding entries are equivalent. So what we can do is set up a series of equations here. So first row, first column, I know that x squared plus 1 equals 5. Okay, so first row, second column, I know that 5 minus y equals x. Okay, those are just corresponding entries. So second row, first column, so second row, first column, I know that 5 equals x plus y. And finally, second row, second column, I know that y minus 3 equals 4. So I have here a nice system of equations. Looks like four equations, but only two unknown values. Okay, so it should be pretty easy. It means I have some excess equations, and that's okay. So let's go ahead and look at this first one. So we have x squared plus 1 equals 5. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I have x squared equals 4. Okay, to get this x by itself, because we have it being squared right now, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But remember, on the non-perfect square side, I always need to include this plus or minus. So it looks like the value of x is going to be plus or minus 2. Well, it can't be both values, because we have other equations that are going on that are all linear in nature. So it has to be one of them, either positive 2 or negative 2. So this first one doesn't help us that much but it helps us a little. We know uh, one of these two values is correct for x. So let's go ahead and solve this last one for y since there are no x's in this one, just a y. So we'll add 3 to both sides and we see that y equals 7. Well alrighty. So we, we know the value for y now. So let's go ahead and investigate these middle two equations. It looks like we only need to use one of them. So let's say 5 minus y, and we know that uh, y is 7, and that equals x. So it looks like x equals negative 2. All right, and what we can do is kind of just verify that. So 5 equals x plus y. So x plus y, negative 2 plus 7. Yeah, indeed, that is 5. So let's go ahead and write these two values up here. So we know x was negative 2 and y was positive 7. Let's just go ahead and kind of plug these back in to these two equivalent matrices and just kind of verify that they're right. So x squared plus 1, so negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5, so that works. 5 minus y, so 5 minus 7 is negative 2, so x was negative 2. 5 equals x plus y, so when I add them I get 5. And y minus 3 is 4, so 7 minus 3 is 4, and that's true as well. So we can see that using uh, negative 2 for x and 7 for y does create two matrices that are indeed equivalent to one another.